Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Smith 22. So I have just taken the pickup truck off the trailer, we've rested and we're now ready for a brand new day. So it is now September, I'm actually not going to be doing any work in this field down here until we have got a stone picker, it's the field that we cultivated in the previous episode. The reason why is because we don't really have to rush it since sorghum, uh, the crop which is going into here, doesn't have to be drilled until next year. So if I just take a look at the calendar you can see for the sorghum which is here, the green section, April and May, and it's only September at the moment, so uh, we're still in the harvesting period. But yeah, as soon as we get a used stone picker come up, we could really do with getting into here and getting it tidied up. So, that field there is going to be, well at least some of it is going to be for the, uh, the vineyard, and hopefully for some olives as well, but obviously it's not going to be very big to start with, since we don't have the money, they're very expensive. These, uh, these vines. So, first things first, what we're going to do is get them placed. Before we go any further though, I must just touch on the semi-autonomous workers. Now this is a feature which has been added to FS22. It is new and it is uh, basically allowing a worker to do more instead of just going up and down the field. So you can get it to uh, go to a specific destination. So it would drive a machine or vehicle to a chosen place. You can also get it to do field work. So you can tell it to do a task in field number 40 for example. You can get it to deliver something, so you can get it to deliver your crops to a selected cell point, wherever that may be, your chosen place. And you can also load and deliver, so it will load goods at one station and it'll deliver it to the next, and you can get it to do that on repeat. So uh, this is something which obviously we're gonna be using as the series progresses. There's not a great deal that we can actually do uh, in this episode just because of the stage that we're at, but I will demonstrate it. So what I want to do is get this tractor here, it's create a job, we're doing field work, not go to, um, and I'm going to select a target location, and then we can click start job and it should drive over there and start drilling. Off you go. And I believe it knows not to hit stuff, so it shouldn't just go and ram into my other equipment or into trees or anything. There we go. Yep. Exactly where I told it to do it. And it's now drilling uh, with the crop which I had selected. So, yes, obviously I don't want to <laughs> I don't want it drilling. This is my sorghum field, and that's a waste of seed. Uh, but yeah, just a just a demonstration there. So now we can really crack on with today's work, and yes, this worker, this semi-autonomous worker system is going to be used on a number of uh, occasions. I think in particular it's going to be good for carting from the farm to a cell point. Okay, so as mentioned, vineyards are not cheap. So we're gonna have to start small and then we can get bigger as we go. So if I go into the correct category here, which is that one, construction and then production, orchards. I think I'm gonna do grapes first. It's also cheaper than doing olives, but I wanna do both. So it makes sense to start pretty much at the edge, I would say. Okay, not the right time of year. I've just paused that feature temporarily just so I can do this. And you can see we're already up at £3,000. If we say £5,000 per row, roughly, I'd like it to be quite square. There we go. And then put another one in. Make sure I get this done straight. Seems nice and simple. Good. Yep, that's looking very good. We have £62,000 left, so we can do three, certainly. Just need to get it in the right place. Should be fine. And then, yep, yeah, just there. Good. So we have planted some grapevines. Not too many, but we're gonna be expanding. Uh, we'll, we'll expand across the field. And then maybe the top section of the field can be um, for olives. But obviously, as we don't have the money at the moment to do all that, 
I will cultivate this area and we'll put another crop in so we can make more money. Uh, but it's nice just have this little corner uh, with the grapevines and it's going to be always available to expand. So, yeah, first things first. Let's get this tractor underway. As it's a new day as well, it would be wise to take a look at the used machinery list, see if there's anything good, anything that could be really handy. For example, a bigger cultivator, because this is going to take a long time otherwise. So this one here is used machinery. There is indeed 72% off. It's going to need a bit of work. Um, it's done 35.7 hours, four meter working width. There's also a roll, but that is, in fact, look at that, 75% off that. The wrapper. Oh yes, this is fantastic. This is one which we currently have, and it's only got a 2.5 meter working width, and yeah, 7,177 pounds at least. Uh, we might even be able to get more if we return it, if we don't just sell it straight from here. So I think it's going to be a good buy, but it's going to cost us a bit of money to fix it up, uh, which we are going to do. As we have the money available, it would probably be wise to buy it first and then establish if it is a good deal before we sell this one. And if you watched the previous episode, you'll know that we did put some canola in the ground in the neighbouring field, so that's going to have to be fertilised. Okay, so that is the uh, place where we buy everything. This looks to be the workshop around the back. Lovely. As I said though, we won't sell it just yet. What we need to do is take a look at this other cultivator. That cultivator is £19,500 new. 72% saving. Ah, that's interesting. It looks like you can still add some modifications to it. Free of charge, though. Those ones there are. Should we go for that? Okay, there we go. £5,285. We'll buy it. So there it is. Our used machine. As you can see, it's missing a bit of paint. We can repaint it. I think I'm fairly confident I want to sell this one. So we'll see what we can get back for it. So quite clearly the condition is really good, but the paint condition is not really good. We can repaint it for £2,640, which I don't think is going to be economical. Only £17 to fix it up. So, yeah, let's just sell it. 7,911. So, I don't really care. Oh, I've got an achievement. It just fell off. It was only a matter of time. Yeah, I don't really care about the paint for implement like this. All I care about is that it actually functions correctly. We don't want to be breaking down. So, we'll get that into the workshop. Forget about the paint, but make sure it is perfectly uh, working mechanically. I'll have to take a look and see which my most powerful tractor is as well. I think it is this one, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, yes, you can choose from a list which one we want to work on. So, paint condition, as we know, is dreadful. That would cost £1,159, but to fix it mechanically, only 408 A good saving. Because that is now going to be like new, apart from the paint. And we've saved a substantial amount of money. Right, okay. So which tractor is our most powerful? The Valtra is 190. The Massey Ferguson is 170. So it looks like if we can't run it on this, we're going to put it onto the Valtra Valmet. And that should be able to run it no problem at all. That actually does look to be quite a decent working with. Next, we need to try and source a bigger drill. I am very desperate to explore the rest of the map as well, so I think we're going to start doing some contracts. But not too many, because my focus is going to be primarily on our own farm. We need to put the work in here. Okay, so I will use it myself to begin with, before a worker takes over.
just so they find the right gear. So they're indicating. Of course, I must remember that these all the tractors don't also cancel the indicators. Some do, some don't. We're bringing up rocks in this field now, so we really could do with a stone picker. But it's pulling it fine, no problem at all. It's not a very big cultivator though, in comparison to some of the ones that we can get. There are some huge ones out there. And I'm all for doing the work myself, because it saves so much money. But if it means taking up time, when we could be doing something even more productive, that is when a worker has to take over. But yes, I don't actually know, because it is September, we're not in a huge rush to get anything done. Uh, I don't know what else of importance that we could be doing. And each day is going to be an episode, so we're going to play it around 10 to 15. 10 to 15 times. As I purchase this cultivator, I wonder if they've got something else in stock. If they replace the items that you that you take out of there. Let's just see. Wrong menu. Uh, right. No, there are still four. There was five before. But I'm sure in time, more things will appear. I don't know if it's daily or if it's hourly. We will soon find out. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this isn't going to take too long, so... Let's crack on and we'll save our money. Just nearing an end, finishing off. I must point out as well, you might see some of those rocks there with the wrong orientation. Uh, this is the press preview, not the final copy, and obviously Giants always do patches uh, to fix any issues. It's going to be very important to have some grass, so I think I'm going to probably put grass in some of this field, if not all of it, uh, because I really need to get some animals and I need to get some greenhouses so we can do some winter work. It would also be beneficial to get some bees, because then if we put them near to certain crop types we can get an extra yield. I think since we have canola over there, that would be one of the crops uh, which you can increase the yield on. Yep, just as I thought, in the help menu you can see it says here for bees, place your beehives next to fields and you will soon be living in the land of milk and honey as the bees will increase the yield of canola, sunflower and potato fields. So perfect, absolutely perfect. We'll put a beehive over there somewhere. As for this though, we need to put the cultivator... Well, actually it doesn't need to be undercover, the paintwork's already pretty bad, but... Yeah, I suppose in the future we're going to have to get some more storage. We have some, uh, just some rough grass here. Take it off here. Should be fine just there. Yep, very good. Okay, so yeah, let's get those beehive... Well, I don't know if I should have two smaller ones or just one bigger one. I will try and figure it out, but yeah, I need to be in construction. 
I need to be in animals, bees, and then here they are, the different ones. Only £1,100 for the single hive. Four hives here for 4400 Elongated one for six, 600 uh, 10 for 12 Yes, I'm not seeing a massive... Actually, that is, yeah, that one there is really worth it. If you went for the biggest one, you're definitely going to be getting a, a great deal. Good value for money. Uh, maybe here? I can't really afford the biggest one. Having said that, I don't know how much money they're going to bring in. But we will find out. We shall find out. Okay, so I'm going to place that just here. Should be good. Don't want to hit it though. And then we need a pallet spawning point as well. Right, so we have just £47,292 left. But all of my grain is still in storage. I've not sold anything. So we have that yet to sell. And it's probably going to be a fairly decent figure. Maybe uh, £20,000 or so. And there we go. Yeah, you can see the price for wheat. It's not really at its best, but it is increasing. Sort of January time is when we should be selling it. Okay. So, stones. Because I want to put grass in. We have stones. With the stones, if we'd leave them in the field, it could damage our machinery. And if we use a stone picker, we can actually sell the stones at the debris crusher. So it's not like we're going to get nothing for them. Uh, it's just the price. And I'm really not going to try and lease on this series. Um, although sometimes leasing is the best. It makes the most sense financially. So let's just take a look at the options here. £25,000 for the Dengelman Signature 7200. Right. I don't know. To lease it, it would be £1,275. Yeah, I've gone with it. We're going to lease it because we can clear that field and we can clear that field. Uh, although it will take a very long time. We're not going to do both at the same time. Uh, this is my priority. And I also would like to get some chickens today if possible. Because that, again, is another way of making some nice money in the background. A bit of a change of scenery will... Uh, Get a different tractor. There we go. Uh, probably the voucher. We've used this one at least. Lower that down. We do have a front weight on which we don't really need to have attached, so we need to find a good place for these things. I think I'm going to put it just on this grass. Eventually I'm going to put some greenhouses on here, or maybe over there. Okay, let's go and pick up our stone picker. I still need to look and see where the uh, debris crusher is. But we are actually going to make some money. It would be amazing if we could profit on it. But I doubt we'd make that much on just some stones that we've picked out of the field. We will see. There it is. So quite clearly you can see that it's not big. This is a small machine. It would be lovely to have the big one. But at the moment we don't really have the money for it. It's the sort of thing you'd probably give to a worker this sort of job. But for the first time, I'm going to be doing it because I want to see the stones being picked up. I want to transport them myself over to the cell point. And I need to press X to unfold this. As you can see, it's all offset. Okay. We are ready to pick some stones. Yep, so that's lifting them out. Already got 26 litres. And it's collecting them in the back. Heading back up again. We can do it at 9 miles per hour. I'm just going to do a test. Next time we see an opening, 
a clearing where there's no stones. Let's see if it picks anything from under the surface. Yep, so it is still increasing, despite no visible stones. So they are still there. So really, we need to cover the whole field. We can't just go swerving between the obvious piles of stones. Head back down this side. Yeah, so if anybody interested in um, the stone idea, if you are one of these people who really doesn't want it at all, you can just turn it off. It doesn't matter. Just go into the options, switch it off, just like the uh, periodic plow, you can turn that off as well. You can also just keep it enabled and then just drill anyway, but it might damage your equipment. But clearly, we do not want to damage our equipment, so I need to get as much out of here as possible. 22% full. Let's keep going. Let's get a full load. It's looking good, much cleaner. So I can now get the drill working on the other side of the field. This side of the field isn't finished, obviously, uh, but over half of it is done. That is 86% full. And there we have the rubble. Right, so, um, what should we do? Should we put the stair on the drill? It's the closest. It doesn't actually matter which one. So there we go. Um, pop it onto there. get this set to grass. We do still have some seed left. I guess I could do this from the uh, worker menu. We don't even have to drive to the field. So if I just go up to here, select that tractor, create a job for it, field work, and well it would make perfect sense to start where should we start? Should we start here? Or should we start here? I can see a bit better here. See how that goes. Just want to make sure it doesn't crash into my tractor. But we'll be close. We'll be watching. It does tend to follow the road. So we've still got a few more stones in here. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have enough space to finish the field. We might have to come back. Right, so that's good. Should have uh, a nice grass field by the end of today. Although, yeah, the day has passed pretty quickly. That's why I've put it back down to 5. I think probably times 10 is the perfect speed. Times 15 is a bit fast, times 5 is a bit slow, times 10 is spot on. Okay, we seem to have a worker working just as I ordered. Okay, we're going to have to come back to this corner because we're going to have to uh, turn around and approach from a different angle. We're 98% full. My drill is still going. No problems at all. And there we go. The stone picker has done its picking. It's probably
probably about 15% of a, another hopper load in here, so obviously we're going to have to return. Let's just go and take a look at this. Yep, it's definitely drilling. If I take a look on this map, see the grass, we have a strip of grass. So, yes, yeah, so currently unclear if I should do the whole field, but probably. So this is the debris crusher just over here, next to the livestock market, which is actually not far from here. I went there in the previous episode. So, let's just fold that up. Bring it in. There's the train. And, yes, my honey. Keep an eye on my honey. I can see that I'm going to run over it at some point. Okay. Getting a bit dark. Put some lights on. all those rocks. So as it turns out I didn't really need a bigger stone picker anyway. We've saved money by going for this one. But it will be needed again in the other field. If I take my next turning right that should put me on the correct road to find the stone crusher or the debris crusher. And there's a car here. And we'll probably get first person view. As I said before, because of the car's travelling much faster, I need to be careful. I need to be much more careful myself at my driving. Don't want to go smashing into them. But if you do crash into them, I believe it's the same where you would just basically hit a brick wall. Okay, so the debris crusher is somewhere in this complex, but it's not this first place, it's somewhere around the back. Let's take a look here. Um, am I in the right place? Let's just find out. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's in the back. Um, yeah. There we go. There it is. Start overloading stones. The money will probably go up. Absolutely. £398. So we're just going to call that a discount on the rental. It's pretty much what it is. Getting some money back from what we've had to pay. Busy road. Ah, oh, crikey. Rush hour. Well, we can't sit around all day. I daren't go. <laughs> I used to always pull out in front of the traffic. The path to success is paved with rocks. I'm going. I'm going. You can see what they do. No, oh, they do still break. What we don't want is for the drill to catch up with the stones, where I haven't been yet. That will cause damage to our equipment, which we definitely don't want, although that drill will be going sometime soon. Easy. Nowhere near. I'll get things finished off. The last stones. There we go. So, stone picking complete. 
It was a, a fairly big job done. It's going to really help though. Saves damaging the seed drill. So I don't need to sell these yet because we're going to be doing the other field probably in the next episode. I might get a worker to do it. But as I said, this field here doesn't really need to be rushed as the crop is not going to be drilled until next year. So we'll just park that there. There we go. And we'll see how the drill is getting on. I also need to fertilise the canola field. I need a fertiliser spreader or a sprayer. And of course the fertiliser itself. Um, right. Bees, they've probably gone to bed. They have produced some honey for us. Very good of them. Sweet honey. Oh yes, we'll be doing more with the bees in a future episode. That's still going strong, I'm amazed. Didn't have that much seed in it. Still 13%, but 12%. 78 litres. Oh no, I just saw a stone that I missed. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I'm sure the odd one doesn't matter. Anyway, yes, I'm just going to take a look at the prices for the greenhouses. I want to get greenhouses as soon as possible. So that's going to be productions, greenhouses. Just £3,000 for the smallest one. You can do tomatoes, lettuce and strawberries in all three. But it'll be different quantities. So 3000 for the small, 5000 for the medium. And you see that's a pretty good deal for the medium. And all they require is water. So yeah, where should we put these? I think maybe over here. Because if I put it over here, it's potentially going to be uh, a bit in the way for turning in the field. So that would be a pretty good place just there 5,003 pounds save the game and it, of course with this we can't just buy it and that's it I need to have the water now the water source is over there but I need a tanker and what should we grow strawberries I would say strawberries okay so the tanker, uh, let me just check the used machinery. Oh, look at that, we've got a Mac, 59% off, and a Fent, 55% off. I don't think we're looking to have either of those at the moment, but they are there on offer currently, unless somebody else buys them. It's a shame there wasn't a used water tanker. Let's just take a look. I could leave it until the morning and see if a tanker is available tomorrow. It's nine and a half thousand uh, pounds. If it was in a sale, it probably would be down to about three or four thousand pounds. We have to repair it. I think it probably will be worth leaving it, just in case. It, the chances are pretty slim, but you never know. And then we can start growing some strawberries in our double greenhouse. Right, so I'm going to leave that worker to it, putting the seed in overnight. Uh, in the morning, we're going to be cracking on again. Fertilizer is going to be the main thing. Over in field number 41, which is quite a big field. So yeah, it's growing. We have many growth stages. So we've got plenty of time to put the uh, the fertilizer on. Next time it's going to be plowing, lime, no weeds yet. But yeah, no fertilizer. So that is very important. Anyway... I'm going to wrap this video up here. There's going to be another episode very, very soon. It'll be a new day. Let me just check the weather forecast for tomorrow. Uh, let's just see here. It's pretty much cloudy. Rain in October. So there is going to be rain. But not in the night. So, that's good news. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And until next time... See you again very soon. Bye for now.